Hey, Christy Mattoon here back again um, with a response to a question that somebody left on one of the other videos. So I'll tag this to that video and then I'll tag that to this video. So they're easy to find. Please subscribe, um, share my videos. I really appreciate it when folks do that. It's very helpful um, for my platform. And so I do, do greatly, greatly appreciate that. So the question that was asked was actually on a video um, about voodoo. Can voodoo kill you? <laughs> and of course it can, right? So belief plays a huge role and we know that. And what you believe and what somebody tells you and how you ingest that and internalize it and then turn it back out into your world will make a huge difference. And so the question that they asked was, you know, they have a serious illness going on or a friend has a serious diagnosis and how much willpower would it take to turn that around? So you have to understand the difference between willpower and willing yourself in and out of something and then something like voodoo, right? Or what you believe, right? So we're talking about the difference between a belief and willpower. And let's say that I have a ton of willpower and I'm like, you know, sick and I'm having issues. And so for working, working out for me was part of my, my willpower to start with. And then when I recognized that willpower was simply a choice. It got a ton easier and it took a lot of the angst and the emotion out of it. Willpower is hard when it's attached to negative emotion, when it's attached to something that makes it hard for you to work through or navigate through. Does that make sense? So let's say I want to go work out and I just can't force myself to do it. And every time I get up and try and go do it, I just end up in a mood and I have this bad attitude and whatever. I could very easily, just as easily, go into the gym with a good mood and stay in a good place and enjoy what I'm doing instead of hating what I'm doing in the gym, which is what I eventually recognized I could do that, right? If somebody tells me, and here's the difference, there's a little distinction here. If somebody tells me, hey, you have, and let's just use cancer because that's always a big one, you have cancer. And this is what we need to do. And then they start lining it out for you, right? And they give you the diagnosis and the prognosis and here's how we're going to handle it. And this is probably where you're going to end up. This is what it's going to do to you and how you're going to feel. And we've done this so many times. We know how it goes. And so you're going to get sick and you're going to lose your hair. And like the list is endless, right? And then the outside end of it is, you know, you have three months to live. You have nine months to live. You have 15 months to live. You have... Right. And the question becomes, do you believe what they say, first of all, because just by belief alone, if I decide to buy into what that person says to me, I'm going to start perpetuating the cycle that they just described. And maybe it doesn't end up in quite the same way, but it's going to be pretty darn close. Right. I, I almost guarantee it. Now, if you sit there and listen and inside your heart and inside yourself and inside your mind and inside your brain, the second you hear it, you go, nope, I ain't doing that. That is not me. That's not my outcome. That's not my, my diagnosis. And maybe you do actually have cancer, right? Maybe there is actually a physiological thing going on. But the second you decide that I'm not going to live by whatever that other person told me, it frees you up inside your system to do it a totally different way and have a totally different outcome. By belief alone, you can redesign what you're thinking and doing. Now, I did another video not too long ago on the lack of belief. But what happened if you could totally get rid of your belief system, <laughs> like, like the whole thing, and this is really something you have to kind of grapple with to even get your mind around. What if I didn't believe anything? And I'm not saying like get rid of all your belief in God and your belief in a higher. I'm saying all the beliefs that you believe about yourself here in this plane of reality, in this plane of existence. What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe is true? If those weren't there, if those beliefs weren't there, would you have to willpower through anything? My guess is no, right? And so if you understand the quantum, quantum part behind some of this, and the idea that you have a whole spectrum of possibility. You have a whole spectrum of possibility. 
you have a whole, what do they call it, probability, right? The spectrum, spectrum of probability. In any given thing, there's a ton of probability. It could go this way, 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 it could go this way. And it's just an endless, endless number of probabilities going on inside of one given thing or issue or idea or thought or belief right? There's an endless number of probabilities. So let's say I, I get sick and my body starts malfunctioning and I say, okay, well, my body's malfunctioning. What do I need to do? And I start looking at all the probabilities. One of the probabilities is accepting a diagnosis and then going through the, through the cure. One of them would be denying the diagnosis and doing something totally different. One of them would be accepting the diagnosis and still doing something totally different. Right? One of them would be saying, wow, okay, not doing anything. And I know people that have done that too and walked away absolutely fine. And to this day, if they go in, they'll get a diagnosis of cancer, but it's not active. It's not doing anything. And as long as they don't put their focus into it and don't go into fear about it, guess what? It's just a dormant cell laying inside your body. And actually, science tells us we all have that anyway. We all have dormant cancer cells. And they're just not doing anything until something triggers them into action. Then you get this explosive growth of, of wrong cells and things go horribly haywire and the system, you know, gets offline and goes out of control. So what I would say, if all of that makes sense and you understand it, what I would say to the answer or to the question of how much willpower do you need? You probably need a ton. You need a ton of willpower. You need less belief. I would go on the belief route. And I would design for myself a new probability. And I would step back from the action of being in the diagnosis. I would step away from it. And I would say, well, what's the probability that I can heal this? Because the probability is there. You just have to decide, like, what route do you want to take to get to it? Really, at the end of the day, that's all it is, which is interesting. Your body, we know right now by science that your body produces chemicals, healing chemicals and healing effects. When you hit a high enough note, right? And we're talking about brain waves. If you can get those high brain waves and hang on to it for a period of time, you'll start triggering the body into a different reaction. If you want to start feeling better almost immediately, and this is something I walk people through all the time. Part of the protocol that I use is getting them into heart coherence and then teaching them how to get into it and stay in it super quickly. And when you can do that, that heart coherence for three minutes, there's science on this. In three minutes, your body's going to trigger a different signal, right? Your heart actually sends a signal to your brain. I think it's a 0.1 hertz. And that signal sends your brain into a whole different reaction, and then it cascades all these chemicals down into the system that starts a healing reaction. And think about it. I walk people through this all the time and they think I'm absolutely crazy. But the ones that do it see, see huge effects. If you did that, and so people will sit there and do it for hours on end. Right? That's kind of the goal. You have to get into a trance state, kind of a meditative state. And then you sit there and really juice yourself up for for a couple hours, you know, 45 minutes to a couple of hours is what people typically say. But what if you did that instead of doing this huge, long, like I got to stay in this for two hours? Because I can't. I, I can't. I shouldn't say I can't. I can do that. I don't like to do that. I don't care to. It's not, not something that trips my trigger. So I broke it down into like three-minute chunks. What if I did that for the three minutes to send the signal every hour? I had one girl, I had a girl at one point doing it every 15 minutes. I don't know what happens. Your body sends the signal and you're actually training your body to stay in that loop. You're starting to train yourself to stay in that pattern of the better, the better chemicals of heart coherence, right? And so it's simply, you know, a couple of breaths, put your hands on your heart. You want to bring awareness to your heart. Breathe, long, slow, deep exhales. It sends more oxygen and energy into the cell itself when you exhale longer. And put your hands over your heart. Feel your heart. Go into your heart, right? We're talking about love, compassion, gratitude, huge gratitude. Find a feeling. 
that's bigger than the feeling you feel when you sit there feeling your disease issue. And then be in it. Be in that higher level feeling. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude over the sunrise, the sunset. You know, something that gives you this higher level feeling. And then as you're doing that for three minutes, you're, that's it. That's all you're doing. You don't have to do anything else. Now, if you wanted to start adding an attention to it, intention to it, with attention, you could do that also and really start triggering or targeting right the issue itself and whatever's going on and using visualization we can add all kinds of stuff to it to to signal it faster but just the the state of being heart coherent by itself is going to start calming the body down and sending out that new signal and so that should help a lot um to you know going into with somebody who's at that point a point that they're that ill now is it going to save their life i've heard the miraculous happens all the time so who knows, if you can stay in it long enough and really get those brainwave states high, you're going to signal a huge cascade of chemicals down the system. If you get it up in there, if you get your brainwaves high enough and you hang out in it and then you throw into the loop, I'm healed or I'm healthy, right? Or we go all the way back to a place where your stem cells were just stem cells when you first started popping into creation before there was organs and, and other tissue and it's just the, the natural... Um, unprogrammed cells and we go sit there and hang out in those cells for a little while and give those a lot of good information about feeling good and gratitude what's the feeling of gratitude what's the feeling of pure love and people have crazy amazing dramatic results very very quickly so you know it's all it all depends on on the person it's very subjective to the person and really what they want to do because i also know other people that i will do this with and they're just like i don't get it but they're so blocked off they don't want to get it they don't want to feel the difference so anyway all right i bless you i hope this helps i really do i hope it helps your friend if you need anything else from me please don't hesitate to ask i'm at christy at mindrewire.com um and if you're open we can do we can do some work together I'm always available for that. I'm going to teach you a little bit more on a deeper level how some of this stuff works. All right. I bless you. Have a great day.